Deuteronomy chapter 30 and 7 And the Lord God thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. Shall I want to listen to you, I'll come back at you with another lesson through the power and spirit of Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yoshai. Give me all praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yoshai. In the hopeful year of turn up, in the hopeful year that all of the prophecies come to pass. That was last year, the year of turn up. So we're in the hopeful year of prophecies coming to pass. All the prophets coming to pass, man. So we're just going to check out some of these. Um, I just read in Deuteronomy. We see now with our own eyes, man. Yes, the prophecies are coming to pass, right? We're going to check out some words like we do, getting very much more familiar with our words, man. So this is um an article from news, from um NBC News, man. And I was catching up on the news a little bit. There's a lot to there's a lot to catch up on. You will never catch up on it, catch up fully. But just gonna draw out certain points here. The the driver, his wife and their two children were rescued after going over a two two hundred and twenty two hundred and fifty foot cliff in San Mantano County. The driver will be booked on attempted murder counts. So initially they um they just thought he was he was one of those random so called um accidents which is no such thing as an accident you know like um just an accident person going over the cliff loses concentration or just um something happens and just go off, they end up dying going over the cliff but um now they're coming to see after a little bit more investigating man who drove Telsa off cliff with family inside charged with attempted murder yeah so you got the incident here I'm gonna read a little bit down and then we're gonna go we'll check out the video at the bottom there so we might have we might have saw this and we might have said boy you know that was um well we know it could be it's a judgment anyway whatever way you want to look at it or cut it or slice it Right, we're going to check out the word, the scripture we just looked at. I'm going to some precepts, man. A California man intentionally drove a Telsa, Telsa off 200 foot cliff, 250 foot cliff, attempted to kill his family, officials said Tuesday. The driver and his wife and children survived and were rescued Monday at Devil's Slide in San Fran, in San Mac. Matto country, the California Highway Patrol said. Where was he rescued? You know, you, you can't ignore that. Devil's slide. <laughs> oh, that was a um, spirit created for vengeance, man. Jumped on him. Or um, evil angels, Psalms 87. Evil angels jumping upon him. Whatever way it was a judgment on from on high. So... A little bit more here. These words here. Damesh Anvide Petel, 45, that's his name, of Pasadena was arrested and will be booked on attempted murder and child abuse charges. Once he is out of the hospital, the highway patrol said. The rescue involved firefighters who repelled down the cliff to rescue two children four and seven and a helicopter crew were rescued the two adults from the vehicle officials said so you can imagine how graphic this must have been so they're saying they did not expect to find survivors focus more on that daring rescue at the heart of this story we can talk with cal fire san mateo santa cruz unit battalion chief brian pottinger who was at the scene thank you so much for joining us first of all i mean tell us about this area that's known as devil's slide where the crash occurred just how dangerous is it there yeah the devil slide area is uh, just south of the tom landry tunnel uh, the city of pacifica dropping down into uh, the area of half moon bay it's a beautiful area of California. It's, it's a very, you know, scenic stretch of road, but it's very narrow. 
with uh, cliffs that drop off on one side and they drop straight down to the ocean. And, uh, you know, it, it, in areas, some it's 50 feet and some it's 200 to 300 feet like we experienced yesterday. We just heard in that piece there from our colleague, Gabe, about how you had to rappel down the cliff to get down there. I mean, walk us through how you made a plan to access the car. Is it something your team prepares for and just how difficult of a rescue it was? Yeah, it, uh, we, we prepared quite a bit for this. We, we run calls like this quite often. Uh, so we have our, our fire personnel are very, very adept in, in low angle rope rescue. Um, so we, we prepared to rappel down to the vehicle. Uh, our guys went to work right away. Uh, this one, this particular spot is pretty high. So we, we were using 300 foot rope lines and uh, we just about maxed those out. So this was a very technical rescue, uh, but our guys did a great job and accessed the vehicle and the victims in a, in a, in a really quickly manner. There were a lot of challenges with this one besides the obvious. You had a storm approaching. Also, you were trying to reach them before high tide. We've heard that, thank goodness, it was low tide. If it had been high tide, it could have been a different story. I mean, how did your team navigate all of these challenges to try and successfully rescue them? Well, like I said, we, we, uh, we train in this area and we've run many calls in this area and, and we all work together quite well. Um, there, there were some challenges and you're right about the tide. The tide was, was going out at that time, which helped. You said that you were shocked to find survivors. What was that moment like when you did realize? We brought people up. We could do it in a safe manner without damaging any of the patients. We only have about 30 seconds here, but I do just quickly want to ask because we heard you say that you were shocked to find survivors. What was that moment like when you did realize they were still alive there? Uh, it was very shocking. Uh, we did not expect that. And uh, it really turned my mind into a different avenue that this is not a recovery. This is an active rescue. And uh, it, it, it had me changing my rescue tactics and making some very quick decisions on how we were going to rescue these individuals and get them to, safe, to safety. We're grateful that you and your team did just that. All right, man. So they survived the the two children, uh, the fa the family. This was a man that was attempting to kill his family. Yeah, yeah. His family off the California cliff did so on a purpose. Officials say this. He tells a driver who plunged his family off California cliff did so on purpose. Officials say the driver and his wife. Yeah. So everybody survived. The four of them survived. The two children and his wife. Just wanted to check that out. He attempted to kill his family. So, but the point of this video is letting you realize for your, for yourself, the prophecies are in effect. Deuteronomy 30 and 7. Most I said he's going to put all these curses that are upon us, upon our enemies. Now, as far as I know, uh, at this point, they were Edomites. Uh, and this, these here, as far as I know, these two here, Australian helicopter crash couple. We're on pulse, so and so, the word, family say. All right, man. So we look, look at this. What happened to these guys? <laughs> this is serious, man. Let's check out the video first. Check out the video. There's, it's a bit graphic, so I'm going to skip certain bits. I don't want you to see that. As a matter of fact, you can see that. You can. You don't have to hear that. You can just... um. Let it play. Yeah, they've cut out that bit there because you know it's <laughs> certain bits are unnecessary. About 2 p.m. today, um, police and emergency services were called to a uh, two helicopter mid air collision uh, just opposite SeaWorld uh, in the Broadwater. Uh, those two aircraft, when collided, have uh, crashed, landed, and landed on the sandbank uh, just out from SeaWorld Resort. I saw uh, the two helicopters just as they were about to crash. One of them from underneath seemed like uh, uh, he was he came up and hit the bottom of the other one on the top. I just heard a big crack and said to my husband, what was that noise? Oh, see, see it there? There it is. There it is. They saw it. They witnessed it. The heli uh, helicopter, Australia helicopter crash couple were on Pulse family. Say, couple who died in the helicopter crash are uh, 
on Australia's Gold Coast had arrived in the country days before to visit relatives after being separated. And then we can't even see the blood certain words in this foolishness. Their family had said. So Dinah Hughes, 57, and husband Ron, 65, were killed when two helicopters collided in Queensland on January the 2nd. The fun-loving couple were from Neeston, Ch Cheshire, had a zest for life, their family said in a statement. They added that they were still in a state of shock over what had happened. Officials have said, officials have said the fatal crash happened as less, as less than 20 seconds after one helicopter took off from a sandbar near the Sea World Resort and collided with another aircraft that was landing. Mr. and Mrs. Yu were killed along with the Sydney residents. Along with Sydney residents? Oh, this wasn't no... It kind of... Uh, Vanessa Tetro, 40-year-old, old Sea World helicopter pilot, Ashley Jen Jenkinson, who was originally from Birmingham. Three others, including two children, were badly injured and remain in hospital. All right, man. So, I just read, I opened up with the precept, Deuteronomy, man. And the purpose of this video is letting you know this, this is the year of all of the prophecies, the hopeful year of the prophecies coming to pass. And we won't check out certain... Let's read this again. Deuteronomy 30 and 7 says... And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. Now, if they're not, if there is, right, so-called white people or other, some of our tribes, like Irish or um, European, you know, with that, they got that look. But we know there's a lot so-called um, Israelite foreigners that look just like white people, but they're of Jake's. They were in that mindset anyway. You know, the E mindset. You've got certain of us who are still out there, you know, whether they look like us or they look like the other nations, other um or of the other nations like the the Irish and the so called European, the Scottish, right? Whether they were of ours and look like the Israelite foreigners, they were judged anyway. But the point is that we know prophecies are going out and they're coming to pass. All people that are not right, not in this truth, and not serving the Most High with sincerity and truth, Most High going to bring these type of tragedies upon them in one way or another, or if not, they get through, they're going to get the missiles. Right, they're gonna get the icing on the cake. This is all judgment, this is all prophecy going forward. So yeah, man. So this is the curses going upon the heathen. And you could be you could even be one of um the tribes, but if you've got a heathen mindset, you're still a two third. If they are Jakes, they, right, those couple we just looked at, they're in the two thirds and they got their judgments. You understand what I'm saying to you? So no one's escaping, man. So we're gonna check out this interesting precept here because boy that to be under a curse <laughs> the lord thy god will put all uh will um seven and the lord thy god will put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee which persecuted thee. yeah we could read six and the lord thy god will circumcise thine heart yeah let's go up a little bit more man right three that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion. Now this is this is juicy. And it shall come to pass when all these things that are come upon thee, the blessings and the curse which I have set before thee, thou shalt call them to mind among all nations, whether the Lord thy God hath driven thee, and shalt return unto the Lord thy God, and shall obey his voice to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thine heart and with all thy soul, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon
upon thee and thee and will return and gather thee from all nations whither the Lord our God will scatter thee that's an interesting word you, you can come back to that maybe in, in this video or in another video but I'm focusing on a particular word and if any other and and any of thine be driven out unto the outmost parts of he of heaven from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee and from thence will he fetch thee and the Lord thy God will bring thee unto the land which thy fathers possessed and thou shalt possess it and he will be thee thee God and multiply thee above thy fathers now this is us talking about the children of Israel right because we went off man right that was um the preceding chapters in 28 goes all into that and I'm also saying now he's gonna take away all those curses what we suffering still up to this day the, the chapters in 28 all the things that we if we obeyed we would have been um free we would have been liberated from these those curses we wouldn't have came upon us but we didn't hearken to moses and now most i say now you you suffered all those curses now in verses in chapters 30 and here's the point now this is going to happen and the lord thy god will put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee which persecuted thee so we're coming into the time now where the most is lifting off that yoke of being under the yoke of our enemies that hate hate us and it's going upon these people here and if they're of the if they're of the irish or the scottish they could well be jakes but if not they're heathens and they suffer the, the same fate as the heathens do and even if they're jakes they suffer the same fate as as the heathens do or the ease do because they wasn't calling upon the name of yahweh bashim yoshah just to so that you can understand they suffer the curses of the heathen nations and the e nations and that's going to happen to our own people too if they don't if they're not of the elect ultimately if they're not of the elect same here same here same with these four couple that died this family that well survived the incident but we're going to check this out this word here is it's that it stood out with me for this video we're getting into our words it's the word curse and that ain't no joke when the most I, it, as it explains here so curse meaning in the bible we're going to look into this first it says a curse is the opposite of a blessing and this is what google is saying regarding they're trying to say this is what the bible's saying explaining what curse means in the bible whereas a blessing is a, and we're going to go back to the blue letter is a pronounced meant of good fortune because one is initiated unto god's plans initiated yeah unto god's plans a curse is a pronounced of ill fortune of ill fortune because one opposes god's plans god may curse a person right deuteronomy 28 or a whole nation because of their opposition to god's will right and that's it that's what google said and that is that is true deuteronomy 28 so what does it say the etymology the um the one of the cinnamon says curse solemn utterance intended to invoke a supernatural power to inflict harm or punishment on someone or something malediction the evil eye yes your, the evil eye upon your brother yeah that goes into Deuteronomy 28 and that's gonna that just keeps coming up imparication some of these words i don't know why they block them out i don't know why they do that exarication voodoo voodoo <laughs> hoodoo that's what some of the um, the heathen um the haitians they use that santa maria and also the um um the Dominican Republic as well the um yeah a lot of them are into that you notice know, and some of the islands are into that as well voodoo they call it voodoo a course of blasphemous word of of phase used to express anger now so that's that's it 
you wanted to hark and check out that word there and that is saying it well there some point evil eye yeah and that Deuteronomy keeps on coming out Deuteronomy 28 keeps on coming up and this is getting interesting for me like me getting into understanding a bit a bit, a bit more about because it actually improves your vocabulary <laughs> Some brothers have a good vocabulary. Some of us, like me, we we learn we learn the slang. And I ain't promoting no slang, but you know, a lot of the the uh, disciples and apostles, they were brought up like that. They were brought up raw. That was it. Talks about that. I um, mean, Acts four and thirteen. You know, unlearned men, unlettered men. So if you got slang, and you talk street slang. You you know that's that's just your role in the movie you're going to appeal to, you're still going to appeal to those people and if you talk eloquent queen's english <laughs> which um we can we can you know we all can do you know we all learn a certain amount i mean I, I was brought up in the east end so sometimes you can switch a little bit switch a little bit you know when you want to get your community you want to get your point over you know how to communicate with different people with different backgrounds it's good to be a little bit versatile but um, our first language, for the most part, the most prominent language in Israel is unlearned men. But not uneducated, just unlearned. And if you were, were uneducated in the ways of this world, it's alright too. You, we're getting educated now. We're getting the best education, the best training from Yahweh, Yahushua, the best teachers, best trainers, best personal trainers. We're getting the best education, the best tr training. <laughs> uh, right? If you ain't got none of those um, letters, don't you worry about it. We're getting the best letters right now. And ultimately, salvation. And then the, a whole new door opens up. You understand? The brain and, and understanding all things. You know, King Solomon touched on that you know, on, a, on, a lesser, on a lesser scale. King Solomon, if you can see, it was Yehoshai in his in the reincarnation. So um, Yehoshai was um. It, it go the the rabbit hole goes deep, man. When I was t listening to a brother going in and talking about all that, some of the day King David was Moses, um, King David was Jacob. Man, the rabbit hole goes deep. Yeah, but um, we're looking at this word. See, I'm just focusing on this word, and then um. As they as they say, it's a, it has a domino effect, man. So the the curse. Just zoom in and home in and isolate this word. A prayer that evil or harm befell one's consignment of a person to an evil fate or uncertain origin. Similar word exists exist in German romance. I can't pronounce that. Or oh, Celtic Middle English Combinium says probably from Latin cursus curse sense set of daily prayers extended to set of imprecation as in the sentence of great curse. Familiar read the church four times year a year setting forth the various offences which entailed automatic of the offender also the excommunication so imposed so we're seeing these deaths of the um the, these prominent people like the queen uh, prince philip that was the wife the husband of the queen um pele the latest one was dharma helmin one of those um foot, american footballers he he he, he Succumb to a cardiac arrest is in critical condition but stable they say all these are curses that are falling befailing our enemies man um a lot more a lot more people have died celebrities loads of them in 2022 you understand so even our own people they they be being um taken out being brought back to the spirit world because they ain't hearkening and i was listening to a brother and he made an interesting point a lot of people are fainting they're faint right now who are not in this truth they're fainting 
or they have they they they're destitute. A lot of people are walking like vagabonds, and that's that's the curse is going upon the ease again, the original state. Vagabonds because they're not in this truth. They don't acknowledge this truth, and they can't. Um, is that Hebrews twelve and sixteen? Uh, they profane people, and so the Most High saying right now is that time, man. Curses are going to pop back upon them. Right now, man, we want to get we want to hit this precept again in the blue letter, and then we're going. And the Lord thy God, Deuteronomy thirty and seven, and the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. Backing up what um they said in um in Google, cur what the curse means in the Bible. Now let's compare what Google said regarding curse what they said it, what it means in the bible let's see okay did i tap on the wrong one let's let's go back let's go back deuteronomy chapters 30 and 7 the word curse Strong's H423 Allah Allah So that's how you pronounce that, let's see Compare it with what Google said An oath Of Oath of covenant curse from God, yeah From men Yeah, because that would be um, That would be that, that you'd, you'd class that as witchcraft If, if a man put the curse on the next man, they call it obia or um, witchcraft. What's the other word that they use there? There's another word they use there. Oh, voodoo. Yeah, that would be voodoo, Santa Maria. The um, what do the Dominicans do? The Haitians do, and a lot of the other islands they do voodoo or Santa Maria. That's what it's called. Very similar. So that's when a, a, a man puts a curse on the next man by using our kind of blood sacrificing and all kind of you know make they have to, to curse someone they usually do a sacrifice of some form of blood or something but um and yeah the most high does that too man on the right hand side though so if someone was sacrificed these people were sacrificed here see you don't give your your life to the most high your whole way over shot the curses are gonna go on you what however you want cut it or slice it so we want to make sure we're doing right by the Most High, Yahweh Bashim Yashai, and calling upon His name in sincerity and in, and in truth. Getting right, because a lot of people in this world are either going to succumb to curses, judgments, evil angels, spirit created for vengeance, or or drugs, or fool, just, just damn right, vagabonds, tramps, tired, faint. There's many ways the Most High won't get them. You know what I mean? Foot wear out, shoes wear out, clothes wear out, homelessness goes on and on and on. So we don't we want to be um see, you're gonna put them upon our enemies, man. These curses we're seeing it now, man. In the year of the hopeful year of the prophecies being fulfilled, yeah, and this is that year. We're gonna to start to see them. And already we we, we <laughs> begging us for money. You see there, you see all kinds of judgment taking place, man. Like I say, the year 2022 was um was a lot of judgments. A lot of people died. We we know about the prominent ones, but there's a lot of others too, rappers as well. The list goes on and on and on. The word curse. So let's carry on reading. There's another precept we want to look at. When we just looked at those deaths, Deuteronomy 32 and 29. So now that I am there's, there's another verse I want to check out Deuteronomy chapter 32 Let's go to 35 first 35 To me Deuteronomy 32, 35 To me belong is vengeance and recompense That foot That their foot Shall slide in due time See It's all the most high time Most high said it's going to do that the enemies are going to be full. The curses is going to fall upon them in 
the slide in due time they foot go on slide in due in due time and that's literal in these cases going off cliffs and our kind of spirits going upon them for them to want to kill themselves or evil angels going upon them for them to want to kill themselves for the day of their calamity is at hand and the things that shall come upon them make haste he's making it a haste in this year 2023 the prophecies will start to reveal and we know they already have it came in with a bang like i was talking about the new years what happened the crushing and the dying and the murders and the fires and all that and the icy icy cold weather then it's going to be heat and I, and I really did predict, I got that right, didn't I? My own thing, I just said, people are going to die, people are going to freeze to death, going to freeze over. Most high words don't fall from his mouth without, and they don't fall to the ground without results. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill, I make alive, I wound, I heal, neither is there any that can deliver out of mine hand. See? You don't have to keep saying it, man. We, well, we do have to keep saying it, actually. Yeah, these curses are befooling our enemies, man. Them, them people there, and them people there. Under the, if you're Jake's, you're under a heathen mindset, and most I took you out. But I believe that you're ease, your ease. Your ease. And the same here. Whole family just, just, just the man said, "Oh, I can't, I can't deal with this anymore." That's what you, that's what you call becoming faint or delusioned. So you, you, you actually had to drive your family. You tried to and it still didn't work. Scriptures talk about that, that that's going to happen. They're going to try to kill themselves and they most aren't going to let them do that. That happened right there. That's another video, boy. This is serious. This ain't funny. And we're not making light of this, but because... But we did have to undergo this ourselves. We know what we went through personally with our family. Right? But collectively, as a people, we know what we went through. Again, I keep talking about Deuteronomy 28. Keep talking about it because it, it, is a, it was just what it was. It happened. It, it was real. Mosai put the curses upon us. But now it's going upon the enemy. All praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yashai. The Mosai, he kills, he makes alive. And, he, and there is no God with me. I kill, I make alive, I wound, I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Yeah, and 25. But to me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time. For the day of their calamity is at hand. And the things that shall come upon them make haste. He's making it haste. He's speeding it up. A couple of more presets and we're going to end up the video. The point I'm going to entitle this video. The curse is again upon the enemy. Straight and plain. Simple and plain. Isaiah 2. I uh, know this is um first Samuel two and seven. Let's go to let's go to six. The Lord killeth and make alive, he bringeth down to the grave, he bringeth up. The point is that he's saying that is me do everything. Me bring you up, me bring you down, we, as it goes on, seven. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich, he bringeth low and lifteth up. Eight, he rises up the poor out of the dust. So if you're poor, he can rise you up out of the dust. He can make you, as it goes on, and lift if up the beggar from the dunghill. He can make you win the lottery. So you can just be, in one day you could be in rags. And if, and it's happened, <laughs> the next day you find a lottery ticket and boom, <laughs> you're in the, um, you're in the loot. And beggar from the dunghill. So from rags to riches, man. That movie coming to America, was it coming to America? One of those, you know the movie, I can't remember that off the top of my head. But um, with the one with Eddie Murphy in it, where he, he started to, he was adopted by them two wealthy men. And he and he started to learn how to stock and trade. I might do a, I might do a video on it. But um, he that was from Rags to Riches, the story of that. Something along them lines, the title of it, from Rags to Riches or something. Um... Yeah, so beggar from the dung will set them up uh, among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory for the pillars of the earth and the lords and he that set the world upon them. 
uh, let me take my time with that one because um I kind of rushed that one a bit. I kind of rushed it. He riseth up the poor out of the dust and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. Again, now that, that movie, the Eddie Murphy in it, man, uh, from rags to riches. It's titled something similar to what I'm saying. I can't get the correct title, but that's what it is, from rags to riches. I read it from the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes. Most I can do that. And to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's. And he has set the world upon them. It is the most high movie. That's how you would describe that. He can do anything he wants to do with you. As his pawn on the chessboard. He can make you poor, he can make you rich. Giving our praises to Yahweh Shem Shai. That's why we're not faint like we're seeing these people falling by the well wayside, destitute. And that's the least of the curses if he just lets you be walking around destitute. He can bring you, he can bring you into a helicopter crash. He can make you drive off a cliff if he wants to. He can do that. That's why you need to fear Yahweh Shem Shai. And seek him earnestly with fear and trembling. Last one. Isaiah 45 and 7 says, I form the light, I create darkness, I make peace, I create evil, the Lord do all these things. <sighs> That's why we need to fear Yahweh Shem Yashai. You see what he just did to those people there? The helicopter crash. Yeah, the Telsa driver tried to commit suicide along with his family. This is not no game. This is not something to rank with. The Most High's name should needs to be feared, and we're learning. And and they, and these people are there definitely. If they learn, so a lot of them are going. It's going to be too late. Yeah, man, ain't no joke. And uh, that the elder, one of our elders, um, Elder Ramar, when he was talking about the dream. The vision he had when he saw Yahweh Shai. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh boy. He looked he said he already, what stuck with me, he said he looked like a lion. And he was dark and he had a thick beard. See, people don't fear the Lord, but people were people were in they was they was running. They was you know. And he just said I had to praise him. I had to praise him. I was just praising him and a lot of people were scared. But I had to praise him, you see, because that means that's showing you that they're gonna if they don't fear him now they're gonna fear him if you don't fear him now you soon will so yes i'm gonna end up the video with this so seek the yahoo bashim your shy seek him and serve him with fear and trembling because it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living god hebrews chapters 31 hebrews chapters 10 and 31 is a fearful thing to fall under the hand of the living God. So seek him now while you can. And that includes me. Yeah. In the hopeful year of prophecy. Yeah. 2023, the hopeful year that all of the prophecies come to pass. Seek Yahweh Shem Yoshua now with fear and trembling. Because the curses are falling upon our enemy. Deuteronomy 30 and 7. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies. And on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. As we just looked at the examples. All praise to Yahweh Hashem Yashai to Wada. To Yahweh Hashem Yashai for putting the spirit on, upon me to do this video. And the house of David is rising. And everything the wicked have done to us, past, present and future, is falling upon their own head. We out.